Good morning. It's almost nine minutes past seven on Thursday morning, the 28th of October. We're unpicking yesterday's budget on the show this morning. Some of the highlights include changes to universal credit, business rates being halved for the retail, hospitality and leisure industries for the coming year, and excise duty for heavy goods vehicles is being frozen. Joining me now is finance expert Paul Brown from WR Partners in Shropshire. And Paul has been looking at the announcements. Good morning. Morning, Adam. How are you? I'm very well. Thanks for coming on the show this morning, Paul, giving up your time. What's what's your overall reaction then to yesterday's budget? I imagine you watched it unfold. What did you make of it? I, it I'll be honest and say it wasn't the most exciting budget I've ever watched, uh, Adam. I mean, I think that, you know, that there's, there's quite a few detailed announcements around tax, which is kind of my, my real area. But I think it was, there was a lot of spending promises, but not an awful lot about how that's going to be funded. And I think the big question in my mind is, uh, is where's the money coming from? The Chancellor seems to be relying a lot on the fact that the economy is growing quicker than anticipated and that therefore that's going to deliver more tax revenues. But uh, but yeah, I think uh, I'll, uh, I'll uh, hold, uh, I'll reserve judgment until we get to March and maybe see if there's any other tax changes around then. From what you heard, were there any particular big winners in all of this? I mean, obviously, I think that the, the, the massive winner really is people who are on the minimum wage and that, you know, they've, they've got a really significant, uh, significant increase there sort of up from up to £9 at so £9.50, which I think works out around for a full time person around an extra thousand pounds a year. So, you know, that that's a that's a real positive, obviously. I mean, clearly. You know, cost of living increases, uh, which everybody's talking about, um, the the one point two five percent social care levy that's coming in from from April are going to put pressure on on lower income families. So the fact that people who are in work on the minimum wage are going to get quite a significant rise is is definitely a plus. I think they they would be one uh, one big winner from from my point of view. I think. And and one thing that's often focused on, I suppose, is is alcohol, beer, and prosecco lovers uh, celebrating from the budget. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I think look, it, it was probably the the longest section on uh, on on alcohol duty that I've ever heard in a budget. Um, I think you know the simplification exercise is a good thing, and obviously for for people who aren't going to be having to uh, to pay extra for their for their alcohol in in uh, in the near future, then that's a great win. And obviously for people who like that prosecco, then um, they will, as you say, be be celebrating. I think also there was a. A nice touch, I think, in there around the the sort of draft cut, as the uh, as the chancellor referred to it, where um, they're, they're going to cut the the rate for for draft beers, trying to encourage people back into uh, into pubs, which I think was you know I think one thing you'd say about the chancellor, he does show a bit of imagination in some of the changes that he makes to try and boost some of the industries that have been uh, that have been hit by COVID. So I think that was uh, yeah again a, a a nice little win for those who like to go and have a pint down the local. Although I will say that that reduction comes into force 2023 and it's only applying to beer sold in 40 litre containers and most craft beer uh, breweries do them in 30 litre kegs and they did go for a photo call, didn't they? Rishi Sunak and Boris Johnson lifting 30 litre kegs, which I think perhaps they hadn't (laughs) quite done their research. Anyway, that's for for another time. Were there any any losers? Yeah, were there any losers uh, in in the budget, do you think? Um, I mean, I think the... The issue that everybody is going to face, I think, is around the cost of living rises. I think that you know the the people who are on on universal credit and working, obviously, there's there's a there's a change there, which means that the work is going to pay better for them uh, because the taper is reduced in terms of how much they lose as they start to earn more money. But I think that the big losers are people who you know are on universal credit and who aren't working because. We've had the twenty pound uh, increase, which was introduced as a consequence of of COVID, and you know that is disappearing. I think there was probably no great expectation that that would be extended, but I think it's still disappointing. And while the people who are in work on on universal credit are going to get some compensation, I think that only really benefits. I think I saw a stat to say it only benefits around one third of claimants. So so it, it's kind of almost the absence of an announcement around around universal credit more generally means that the people who are on uh, who are on that um, are going to you know still see their their income cut quite significantly as a consequence of that that uh, that increase not being renewed um, so i think it, you know whilst we've helped people who are in work those who are out of work on universal credit i think you know do come out a bit of a loser from the budget on day to day. the whole universal credit system is quite complex it's quite a hard thing to follow it, 
where where can people go for 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 clear advice because to to see how it possibly might be affecting them because there'll be people left scratching their heads after this yeah i mean i think the, there's there's generally sort of in, in fairness to the to the government if you actually go on to gov.uk and search universal credit there'll be quite a lot of information on there that we potentially calculators i think there's also probably there's a calculator on the bbc website actually which should enable people to go there and kind of put some information in and that will hopefully give them the opportunity to work out overall what the budget what the budget means for them but i mean i totally agree that the the whole the whole system is is exceptionally complicated, very difficult to navigate through. I mean, it, it you know, it causes somebody like me, you know, who does this sort of thing for a living, to, to scratch my head a lot of the time. <laughs> so, um, for, so for so for those who are kind of uh, not uh, not tax geeks like myself, then uh, then I can imagine it is really tough. But there, there is information out there, and I think in this situation, definitely a, a good place to start is the gov.uk website and see if there's any information on there that helps. You were mentioning earlier, you know, where's the money going to come to pay for all of this? What happens if things change in the coming months and years? And I think I think that's the real risk that the Chancellor is is taking. He's relying on this growth that we are seeing coming through, but it, it, you, you do worry that 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 if something does go pear shaped, you know, and you know, we've seen with COVID that things come from left field and and kind of massively impact the economy and and people's lives. I think that there is a real risk that if the growth doesn't come through in the way that the Chancellor is expecting and, and predicting that we could see some, some tax rises. Uh, I mean, I think, as I say, there was a real absence of you know significant tax measures in the budget. We saw the 1.25 increase, as I say, in, to, to fund social care. But the idea of that is it just goes to fund social care. So it's not going to fund the kind of um government spending increases that we're seeing across all, all departments in the in the spending review. So yeah, I do have a slight nervousness that if things don't quite pan out, that that we might find that there will be, you know, tax changes down the line, which, um, you know, they've, and they've, they've shown that they're not they're not afraid to sort of hit the normal working person with those tax changes. So that you know, and um, yeah, as I say, I, I think I'm just reserving judgment at the moment. It's a kind of in my mind. It's a bit of a hope for the best, but prepare for the worst kind of situation, I think. Paul, thanks so much for joining us on the programme this morning. Paul Brown, finance expert from WR Partners here in Shropshire, looking at the announcements from yesterday's budget.